Right, welcome to part two. In this section, what we're going to do is look at uh, giving it a little bit more depth because at the moment it's looking pretty flat. By the flat, I mean is there's no definition between the road surface here or the car and the background. So starting off, we're going to come to the car layer here. In fact, it's called layer two. Let's just double click on it. Let's call it car so we know exactly what's on that layer. Right, there it is. Now to this layer, we're going to come up to layer. We're going to drop down to layer styles. We're going to go to style settings. When this opens, we're going to click on drop shadow. Now bring in the cursor out. You'll notice it's still an arrow. I can't do anything with the drop shadow itself. Yes, we can adjust the size with the slider here. You can change the distance. You can change the angle all up here. But if you click OK, you'll notice that on our car layer, we now got have an FX icon. Now with the FX icon, if we double click on this, back comes the same dialog box. But this time when we bring our cursor out, the arrow becomes the move tool. So we can actually move the drop shadow around, which is much better. It gives us far more options. Let's move it into that sort of position there. Let's drop the opacity down. And it's something like that is the sort of look that I'm after. That looks pretty good. Click OK to that. Don't forget, you can always come back into this and you can always change it. In other words, just to click on it and there it is. There's all the bits and pieces you've put in. Right, I want to apply this uh, drop shadow to the road layer underneath. Yes, you can come up to this. Yes, you can press the Alt or Option key. So pressing down Alt or Option, if I click on this, you'll notice we get a double arrow. You can drag it down onto layer one. If I release it, in goes a drop shadow. If we double click, up comes the settings. There's the move tool, but when I move it, it moves to the car as well. Not what I want, so I'm going to click cancel. You can grab hold of this as well. So I've got hold of the FX. You can drop it in the bin and there it is. It's gone. But how about our shadow? Well, what we can do now is we can create our own shadow working on layer one here. Let's use command J, control J to duplicate the layer, dropping down to the layer underneath. We're going to double click on this layer and we can call this shadow because we're going to create the shadow out of this layer. So there it is. Next, we're going to go down to this little icon here for the adjustment layers. We're going to come down to hue saturation. We're going to click on this. We're going to come to the lightness slider and we're going to drop the lightness slider down. As we drop it down, you'll notice all of the background is now got turned black. If we click on this little icon here, this is going to clip it to the layer that it's immediately above our shadow layer clicking on this. Let's take a look. There it is there. There's our shadow layer. If I switch this off, you can now see this has become solid black. If we come between the two, because it's clipped, and you can see this little arrow here, the bent arrow telling us it's clipped. If you bring your cursor between the two layers, pressing Alt or Option, that's unclipping it. Everything's now turned black. If we clip it back again, there it is. Job done. Looking pretty good so far but not very realistic as a shadow. So let's switch this back on, but make sure we're working on this layer here, on our shadow layer. We're going to come up to filter. We're going to go to blur. We're going to go to stay. We're going to go to Gaussian blur. Now blurring it by, if we just click on the side there, you can see how much we're blurring it. And that looks pretty good. Perhaps just a bit more into that sort of area there. Yep, like that. Click OK to that. Right, pressing V on the keyboard brings up the move tool. Don't forget we're on the shadow layer there. We can bring our shadow now and we can start to move this around into that sort of area there. It looks pretty good. Come into the opacity. So we're on the opacity in the layers panel. Just dropping this down until it starts to look realistic. There it is there. Great stuff. Right, next want to put a frame, a border around the road surface here. So let's come and click on the top layer there. Now on the top layer, to get our border, what we need to do is you'll notice there's a framework coming around this thumbnail. Click so that thumb, that framework, that framework around the thumbnail is now around the mask. So you need to take it from here and make sure you're working on the mask. Right with my cursor over the mask area there, press command or control. You'll notice the way the cursor changes. It's getting that little square on the back. Clicking down, we've made a selection. We're going to drop down. We're going to put in a new empty layer. Now that selection has moved up. It's now on this layer here, layer four. In fact, I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this stroke. 
because we're going to be applying a stroke outline to this particular layer here. Still got the selection. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to stroke outline selection. That's exactly what we're after. Width 20 pixels. Yes, sounds pretty good. Color blue. No, not so sure. So clicking in the window, let's go for white. Yeah, I know it's boring, but it'll work with this. Location inside. Yes, in other words, it's going to be applied to the inside of the selection. Just what we're after. So click OK to that. And through it comes Command D, Control D to deselect. There it is. There's our white frame around the outside. But call me fussy or what. But wouldn't it be nice to have that white line coming through this area here as well? Well, we can. Let's come up to the car layer here. We're on the car layer, we're going to drop down. We're going to put in a layer mask. Now, we got black as the foreground color, which is just what we want. We're going to pick up a paintbrush, which is just what we want. But on the small side, so let's make it bigger. I'm going to just use the right hand square bracket. You'll notice it going up in size too. That sort of area there looks pretty good. Roughly the same size as that stroke outline. The opacity 100 is way too high. We need to drop this down. I'm just going to press 1 on the keyboard. You'll notice it's dropped down to an opacity of 10%. You can, of course, use the slider here. But I just find the numerical keys much quicker and easier. Give me 10%. Right, coming into this sort of area here, I'm just going to click down, drag it across, and there it is. You can just see that faint line coming through there. want to make it look as if it is through the, the side screen of the car. Perhaps you might want to go over it again. Looking pretty good. Any areas you've gone over, you can just see it on this part here. If I press X on the keyboard, if we come in, if we take this back up to 100%, which is pressing 0, I can come in and I can just tidy up that area there using the mask. And there it is, job done. So you can just see that faint outline coming through. Command 0, Control 0. Looks pretty good. And you can see there it is there. That looks better. And it's just coming through the, uh, the back fin of that car there. Great. Right. But how about giving it a little bit more of a dynamic look? I think we could do, do with a, a bit more of a dynamic feel. We've got a lot of space around it. Yeah, we could crop it down, but uh, let's take this a stage further. Well, on the top layer, we're going to drop down. We're going to come down to a shadow layer here. I'm going to press Shift. So make sure the top layer is selected. That's the live layer. Dropping down, pressing Shift. So now they're all highlighted. When they're all highlighted like this means we can move and we can do anything we like to these layers here. For example, if I just pick up the move tool, I can just move this around on the frame. But if I use command T or control T, that has now put the transform tool around it. And it's this because what we're going to do is we're going to put it at a bit of an angle like that, just to make the whole thing a little bit more dynamic, just lifting it up a bit, double click into apply and it goes like that. If we just zoom back in, Use Command-0, Control-0 to go to. What's actually happened is, thank you. Right, now if I do it, in we pop. <laughs> you need to just to de deselect them. So we've got this. That looks pretty good like that. That angle has made it a little bit more sort of dramatic. However, what we can do is if we come to the shadow layer. Now with the shadow layer, what we're going to do with this is Command T, Control T. So we've now got the transform tool around this. I need to zoom back out. I should have stayed there while I was at it. Right. When we're doing this now, I'm just going to come in. Let's just, there it is. There's our shadow. What I want to do is I want to sort of drop it underneath. If we right click and we choose distort, what I would like to do is just pull that end down there. Let's pull this end up here. I want to give it that look that this end is coming off the back more something like that there and something like there. That's it. Right. Double click into apply. There it is. Job done. Command zero, control zero to go to filter and screen. You'll notice the way that a shadow is coming through there. The edge here looks a little bit jaggedy. Don't worry about that. As soon as you come into 100% or 50%, you'll notice it smooths out. So don't worry about that. It's looking at it at odd amounts as we are here, 25.59%. Looking pretty good so far. Like the way this is coming together. You can do whatever you like with it. You can come to it. You don't have to have that color background. You can sort of perhaps just drop the opacity down a little bit. You can even do things like uh, come into the background. Command J, Control J to duplicate the background and go into Filter, Blur, 
Gaussian blur and just blur in the background off like that. It's just something very, very simple, just blur in the background away and you can sort of add to the effect. It's entirely up to you what you do with the picture. Picking up the crop tool, I think, yeah, perhaps with this we could just crop it down. We don't need all that space in the uh, the foreground there. Just bringing it through, just looking at the crop ratio there, like that, and there it is. There is our finished image, or perhaps there's our finished image, entirely up to you. Let's pop it on the black background. Let's just use the tab key to remove the tools. Command zero to open the whole thing up. Go on, give it a try. It's a great way of giving your images just a little bit more of a dynamic look. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.